Welcome to this tutorial on Xcode. We're going to be looking at creating a very first project and how we can set up our environment. I'm using version 11.1. Also, I'm using Catalina 1015. There are two main environments that we'll be working in. One is the playground and the other one is Xcode. For this tutorial, we'll be looking at how we can actually create a new Xcode project. So to do this, just click on Xcode. Now, when it opens to our first menu screen, it's actually asking you for the type of project you would like to make. So the template we'll be using is the single view app. You can make templates for the Apple Watch, Apple TV, the Mac OS, and also cross-platform. We should see in future ones the iPad as well when they separate the two operating systems from phone and iPad. But we're gonna start with the single view app and we're gonna click on next. Now in this section here, it's gonna choose the options for your new project. We need to give it a project name. This is the name of the application. So depending on what you're doing, it could be my first application. Then it's gonna ask you for a team, I don't have one. Organization name, I just put my name in there. And the organization identifier, which needs to be unique. Most people use the web address and go com dot in the web address but you may not have one, so you can actually go com dot and your first last name. Now in our projects, we're gonna be working with the Swift language rather than Objective-C. Also the user interface, rather than using Swift UI, we're gonna be using the UI kit, which is the storyboard. So you must understand there's a difference between Swift UI and the UI kit. So in our tutorials at the moment, we'll be using the UI kit, which is another word for storyboard. So you need to be aware of that when creating a project at the moment. And also when you're looking at tutorials on the internet, be very aware of what they're selecting here. And I'll be leaving these two ticked in our project, especially for our first one. And then I'm gonna click on next. The project then asks you where you'd like to save it. So you can select on desktop. If you have a new folder you would like to use, you can create a folder and select that folder. Then the project opens. You can come back to this information at a later stage but I'm happy with that at the moment. And I'm gonna go straight into what is called View Controller Swift. This is the coding area. I've actually changed my font size so you can actually see me code on screen. And the other main one we will be using is what's called Main Storyboard. So once your program has been loaded, the storyboard then opens here. So when I start a new project, the first thing I do is actually select this type of phone I would like to build my app on. So in this case, iPhone 8. The reason for that, it uses a less dense pixel map on the phone, and therefore it doesn't require so much processor power. If you are using MacBook Air, it's a good idea to actually step your projects down to the iPhone 8. You'll actually find it'll be more responsive and perform better. I also have a look at, do I want it to work in dark mode or in light mode? I can also select if the orientation is portrait or if I'd like to build my application in a landscape layout. Once I've made these selections, I then select the output test phone for the simulator. That enables me to set up my environment. I can also up here, select my phone if I plug it in and therefore the application will be pushed to my phone and I can actually test it on my handheld device rather than on my laptop. Two of the main areas that I work in is the main storyboard where I'm able to add objects to the stage or the user interface or in Xcode terminology view controller and the other one that I use a lot of is the coding area where we have the Swift coding. Now you notice that I'm using UI kit and not Swift UI. So the coding language and the coding style I'll be using is the UI kit. You need to be aware of this when you're working and viewing tutorials on the internet. So they're the main two areas at which I work from. You can show and hide these menus as you need them. So you can get more work area and at any time you can bring them on and off the screen. Another very important thing that you do need is once you finish building your view controller, you then need to associate the objects on your view controller with the coding language, or in this case, the UI kit. To do that, remember to click on your main storyboard up on the right hand side here, you can then select the assistant. This then will open up the code with the view controller on the left hand side. So then if we close down the menu, we can actually have more room to work in. 
and therefore you can select the objects and drag them across by going select, control, click and drag, and then you can drop those associations off. Some people will be using this one here to get to the assistant as well. So if you don't have the little three lines, you then need to select the two circles that overlay, like the Venn diagram, and that'll allow you to get to your assistant. Always remember to save your project as you go. So as you do a little bit of layout, or as you do a little bit of code, make sure you go Command S or go to File and Save. Once you've saved your work, you can leave the project by going File, Close Project. This is stopping the simulator at the moment. Then once you go back to the main welcome screen, you can then select the application here and open that project once more. You can also go File, Open Recent, or you can go Open and Locate the project as well. When you're ready to test your project, you can then head up to the top here, make sure you've got the device you wanna test your code on. So like I said before, it can be an iPhone and the version of iPhone you have, or it can be an iPad, or it can be the device that you've plugged in, which could be your personal handset or an iPad that you've plugged in. In this case, I'm gonna use the iPhone. And when I click on play here, it will build this project for the simulator. Now this will be a very quick process for me because there's nothing on the stage and no real code that has been written yet. So launching my first application. On the simulator, if you open that, selecting that in your toolbar, you'll see the phone boot up and you can actually start seeing the application being prepared to run. Once it's up and running, you can see that on stage. Every time you make an adjustment, you can hit play again. It'll ask you to stop and rebuild the new one, and then it'll open a new instance of that. If you wanna go back to the main page, click on the dot, or if you're on an XR or iPhone 11, go Command Shift H. That will bring you back to the home screen. Then you can select any application that's on here because it's a simulator, it will actually simulate an actual phone working. So in this case, we can actually go to a browser, search through to a website, and you can actually select a class, etc., and it will open up to that. You can have multiple versions of simulators running, so you can open the next one in the iPhone XR and do a comparison, especially about layout. And as you can see, this one's not responsive. In other words, it's bled over the screen size. And if you wanna close a window, you can close that. The next time you hit play, it will then reopen the phone. You see build successful. And then relaunches the phone and the application to see your testing. Once again, remember to save your work. I hope you found this tutorial useful and learning on how to open up a project in the UI kit. Some basic setups. Also how to test your project, save your project. So I encourage you to have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Xcode videos. And I wish you all the best in your adventures in coding in Xcode.